And they're off. Mark your card on Off the Ball. With Boyle Sports. Make this Cheltenham epic. 18 plus. Gamble responsibly. See gamblingcare.ie. John Duggan is back with us. John, good morning to you. Jaron Chang, good morning. Uh, yesterday we spoke about the anticipation at the start of the day, but really it was uh, towards the end of the day when Constitution Hill won, but followed, I think, by, I made the case earlier, one of the all-time great moments in Irish sport, the end of Honeysuckle's Cheltenham career and victory for Henry de Bromhead at, you know, in the midst of the grief that the family are feeling. Um, it was just really incredible. Yes, uh, Ger, uh, you could see it in Rachel's reaction when she crossed the line on Honeysuckle. Uh, I, felt, I think she was in tears. The emotion just was, was, she was exhausted. She could feel it was such a effort to get over the line because it looked like Le- Love and Wa was going to win the race, but Honeysuckle such a gutsy performer. And four wins now at Cheltenham for her in, in four successive years. But I think it's all of the story is about Henry, really, and... I spoke to him after the race and the strength that he showed, the dignity uh, in what is a very difficult situation for him. Um, I just really felt that a deep, visceral, unspoken love was in the atmosphere and in the environment yesterday for Henry and the de Bromhead family. And he was getting so many people coming up and embracing him and hugging him. And uh, Sport has that ability to warm the heart in the most difficult of circumstances. And yesterday was one of those days. And you could really feel the best of humanity in that winner's enclosure after the race. We actually we will play two snippets now from uh, your interviews with both the, the winning jockey and the winning trainer. I think we're going to start with Henry here. Have a look. It's incredible. And then to see the reception she got and we got, you know, everyone's just showing their support to us with... After what's happened to us, with, you know, losing Jack and everything, it's, you know, any time we have a winner at any of these meetings, the support we get is incredible. And look, not that you can depend on it, but it's lovely when it makes things a little bit easier when it does happen. It makes it uh, maybe 1% easier, maybe? Yeah, yeah. 0.001 you know but it's but like yeah you know it's uh, someone said every time there's been two races run in Jack's name and um, we didn't win them but we won races on the same day and after we won each race this big rainbows appeared and I haven't seen it but someone said they sent me a photo there was a small little rainbow just behind Rachel after she pulled up so we know he's always with us and uh, yeah it's really tough but uh, like I say as we said, these days can make, you know, they help a tiny bit. Uh, look, it was just an unbelievable day. Um, it's been an unbelievable journey with her. She's been incredible. Henry's done a sensational job with her. And like to get to finish like that, walk back in in Cheltenham, so special. If you think about it, four runs at Cheltenham, four wins. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal. Uh, but like, testament to Henry and the way he's trained her, to be honest, uh, like to bring her back here every year um, and have her have her the way he has her like it's just unbelievable Davey Roach is head lad as well like head lad and assistant trainer he does a massive he plays a massive role down in Ockeen and um, yeah and Coleman who looks after and rides her out and yeah it's just it's a massive team effort what was your feelings going into the race were you confident yeah look I was like I have to be confident in her it'd be very weird if I wasn't so yeah look it was brilliant she got the job done uh, got the job done it wasn't one of those um, victories that we've seen before where she completely destroyed the field there, absolutely was digging it out over the last she was because there's an extra half a mile so it's two and a half miles and, and it's harder for her I think over that distance for Honeysuckle she's nine years of age now I think they're retiring her for the right reasons because you know she, she should be having a happy retirement and I think Rachel and Honeysuckle have captured the nation's imagination over the last few years I think they've been really able to illuminate the racing landscape and, and, and bring ra- racing into the front page of, of the newspapers and, and, and onto the news part of the TV, um, the, the success they've had together to win two champion hurdles and two Mars hurdles. And even before the season, Honeysuckle was unbeaten. So um, it was just, from a racing perspective, it was the fairy tale. And then you had, the obviously, the sadness with Henry and, and then the way he spoke afterwards was... It's just so admirable, you know. She's one of our great sports people, Rachel Blackmore, John, isn't she? I mean, even just the way she conducted herself after the race, it just kind of typified the woman. Absolutely. And remember, she's only turned pro eight years ago. 
and she's in her early 30s now. So she doesn't have it easy. It took her months to ride her first winner and to go and do what she's done. It's just incredible to ride the winner of the champion hurdle a couple of times, the Gold Cup on a Plutar last year, the Grand National on Manila time. She's had an unbelievable run and she's been a great ambassador. And I, from speaking to everybody in the game and just speaking to people around the country, Rachel Blackmore is so popular. She is so popular with young people. Uh, young boys and girls, and uh, she's a great ambassador for the sport. And it's just been a brilliant story, uh, Rachel and Honeysuckle. And um, hopefully, hopefully, there'll be more to come with Rachel. And hopefully, she's got another couple of years ahead of her. Is there any chance that Honeysuckle might fetch up to Punchestown? There is a chance. You never know. But uh, I did feel that yesterday was it. I did feel that you, you couldn't get a better moment. I feel than, than that. And I, I don't think they need to, if they if they'd like to, because obviously it's our national racing festival in Ireland at Punches Down to that you could understand being the reason for it um, for another swan song but the horse is, the horse is well the horse is safe and I almost feel that yesterday was was it yeah okay um, I saw Johnny Ward making the point that they should do whatever they can at Punches Down to get Constitution Hill over because Constitution Hill is the new superstar that is capturing the public's imagination after as dominant a performance as you're ever going to see Yes, he jumped the last hurdle a bit far out. So he, he nearly clipped the back end of it. And that would have been just a, a, a disaster in the race. But look, ultimately, this horse, as I said, you know, if he starts going into the air and flying, you wouldn't be surprised. I really, really, really now hope they go for the Gold Cup over fences. They've been running over hurdles. They won a champion hurdle. Like Nico de Bonville didn't even take the whip out. I would have won on them, Jerry. You would have won on them. Shane would have won on them. <laughs> I would have fallen yeah. off after the first hurdle. But like, nice of you to. Uh... <laughs> I, I wouldn't have height for a jockey, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so, um, and I wouldn't be able to do the weight. So, <laughs> so Constitution Hill. Um, I, like Dawn Run is the only horse we've ever done it. The Champion Hurdle Gold Cup Double in 1986. It's, and it's a very difficult thing to do because you're going from like a two mile distance to a three and a quarter mile distance. You're going from a, a hurdle to a fence. But I do, I do think this horse is look. He looks like a chaser, and I do think they should go that route. Will Nicky Henderson come to Punchestown? I hope so. He likes Punchestown. He likes um, coming over to Ireland, and I'd love to see it. Okay, um, but, and especially with the Barry Garrity link as well. Mm. Today it's um, the Champion Chase and the Bumper. Uh, talk to us about the Champion Chase. What do we expect here? But John hasn't put the hat uh, on yet, yeah. That no. That, that's the no. That's the come. Sorry, John. Sorry, I didn't, didn't want to ruin your surprise. Stick to the script, Hannah. It says Hannan, it here. Stick to it the says, script, it says big Just read the script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Stick to the script, Shane. Come on, man. <laughs> um, yeah. So we have. Um, Column shaking really his head in there. You're in a lot of trouble, Shane. I'm done after this. <laughs> yeah. Three, three horses uh, in in this. Um, Energyman won the race last year, and that horse is trained by Willie Mullins and uh, will be ridden by Paul Townend. Disappointed last time at Cheltenham in January behind Edward Stone and editor De Geese, who won the race. Edward Stone is the winner of the Novice Chase last year, the Arkle Chase, over two miles. And you've editor De Geese, who is an improving type. I think Edward Stone's going to win it. I think Edward Stone is a really good jumper. I think he'll improve. It will be better ground today than it was in January. I don't think he was cherry ripe back then. And I just have a feeling... Look, we saw Fasal Vega yesterday that a Willie Mullins horse could put a disappointing run behind him, but I'd want to see better than I did from Editor Jim in the last day um, if he's going to repeat uh, the feat of winning his champion chase in the second year in a row. I like Edward Stone in that. I think it's between the three of them. I can't see another one. The bumper, a lovely story in that John Gleeson, the son of the RT TV broadcaster Brian Gleeson, is doing his leaving cert this year and he rides a dream to share uh, for John Kiley down in Waterford. That's a great story. And we also have... Fact of file, Patrick Mullins is riding that. That's a tip in itself. There's a couple of horses in the green colours. Um, fun, fun, fun. And yeah, that, that's got a, a big chance in the bumper as well. And the, you know, So I'm looking through it here. Fun, fun, fun. We'll have what Daryl Jacob on board. That horse just cruised clear at Leopardstown last time out. And then It's For Me, ridden by Paul Townend, was the most, most visually impressive bumper horse I saw. It's For Me. But always look where Patrick Mullins is going and he's riding fact of file. So... Look, uh, it's an open race. There's 24 runners. Yeah, uh, Factofile is a uh, Willie Mullins horse in JP's colours and Patrick Mullins is on board, so, you know. Uh, yeah. Right, it's time. It's time for JD's... What's going to happen here, Shane? I wonder. Come on, tell us. Go on. <laughs> it's time for John Duggan's Charity Tips Yay. of the Day. <laughs> Woohoo! 
Uh, it's still surprising, well, to be fair. Yeah, it cost forty five pounds, lads. Forty five pounds. Oof. Yeah, and there was one going for sixty nine pounds, and another. There was another shop um, in the in the. They've got this big tent with all the kind of marquee and all these shops. They were they were pouring out glasses of champagne while they were uh, selling half a scarves yesterday uh, at eleven o'clock in the morning. And uh, obviously, I'm a professional. I wouldn't wouldn't go there. But if you're off. Uh, it's a, it's not a bad idea actually. It's you tipped tip the eighteen to one winner Jazzy Matty yesterday, John. So that paid for the hat. That was the uh, fairy tale of New York. Um, came in at eighteen to one. Hey, uh, to, yeah, yeah. A lot, yeah, of, yeah, lot yeah. of controversy about that, of course. Why? Came in at ten to one. Is what Co- Colum thought it was all these years. He's been singing the wrong lyrics. Called out. So Colum Buhig's karaoke life in Cork is now uh, his reputation's in, in, in treads. Absolutely. Patters. I mean, how, how does anybody know it's not 18 to 1? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of Christmas he's, Eve's wasted, Colum. He's singing in our ears. Unfortunately, the rest of the world can't hear it, or fortunately for our ratings. Who knows? Maybe we should get bad singing on it. That's why. That's how they built the whole um, pop idol thing. Anyway, John, I like the hat. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that they, was reported... Um, the most expensive pint of Guinness in the world, but it's actually, it's not really a pint of Guinness, it's black velvet. But uh, the Daily Mail were loving this. 20 pounds, 20 of your finest uh, king what? pounds for a pint with a, 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 a top of, instead of my wadi, it's champagne. In a plastic cup. I presume it's plastic, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Re- well, they've, ex- they've, they've extended the Guinness Village. I need to go down and see what it's like because apparently they've extended it. The Guinness Village is one of these beautiful... Um, Christine Mecca's at nine o'clock in the morning oh. that just turns into this, uh, I don't know what, what you want to call it, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, <laughs> Decadent <laughs> in the brain. That sounds like paradise. Yes, at, at, at five o'clock in the evening. A Guinness Village. I actually, I live opposite the, the Guinness factory there in, the, in Smithfield. Right across, literally, you open the window, you, you step onto the balcony and you can, you can see, it's like Willy Wonka's factory. You can see your Guinness being made. You can smell the barley and the oats and the hops. So Guinness Village sounds like uh, paradise to me. Shane's balcony sounds very posh, doesn't it? Ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Ooh, look at me, my yeah. balcony. That's very small. Yeah. My double so balcony. I, 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 thought, I thought Temple Looking Bar was bad. my minions. <laughs> Making my um, Notions. So, we Fun. got Paul's tips, yeah. <laughs> yeah Paul, oh, yeah. yeah. Rescue this part of the show here, JD. Come on. Uh, Ball Sports giving us the 200 euro. Uh, we are obviously up about 97 already. Um, the nap is Edward Stone at half three at six to four for 50. Um, 130 Champ Kylie each way at 8 to 1 for 15 each way. Champ Kylie is a horse I've been impressed with this season. I think he's got a nice turn of foot. He could be an each way chance. Time Hill in the novices chase at 210 at 9 to 1 for 10 each way. Iker Allen at 25 to 1 for Willie Mullins uh, on, on a longer distance now in the colours of JB McManus might be worth a 10 euro each way bet in the 250. The 410 I think Delta Work will win the cross country. He's 6 to 5 for 30 bucks. The 450 midnight run. As 18 to 1 for Joseph O'Brien, first time in a handicap for 10 each way. And the 530, I'm going to go for fact to file, 9 to 2 for 15 each way. So the each way bets, fact to file, midnight run, uh, Iker Allen at 25 to 1, and Time Hill and Champ Kylie. And the win bets, Delta Work and the nap of the day, lads, Edward Stone in the champion chase. All right, JD, good stuff. Enjoy today. Happy punting. Thanks a million. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Shane. Cheers, John. And they're all. Mark your card on Off the Ball. With Boyle Sports, make this Cheltenham epic. 18 plus, gamble responsibly. See gamblingcare.ie.